if you do go to the pyramids, do not accept anything from anyone because they're gonna scam you. It's the girls that kind of have like the Toronto accent, like, we went to Brampton and I was like, why is everyone here brown? I was like, am I still in Canada? He was like, yeah, you're just in Brampton. I was just like, well, what would I do? And then he was like, what would I, do? <laughs> I was one week in the country and I was already lost in Brampton, bro. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Burrow Sound, recording here live at 25th Hour Studios. I'm your host with the most DJ Czar. Uh, we got a special guest in the building, someone who has about 74,000 followers on TikTok with over 4.8 million likes, straight from Egypt via Dubai. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right? you've done your research. I did a little research, <laughs> brother. Omar Beltagi in the building. Thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah. I'm ready. Yo, bro. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, this guy found his way in here, and like no one has ever found their way in here without like me having to grab them from outside or like calling me. So one, I'm impressed by just the navigation skills. I appreciate it. You know, I, I, I learned it as soon as I came here to Canada. You know, that's just how it's been. I've been yeah. asking everyone. I feel like uh, people, especially from the Arab world. And you've probably seen a lot of different things. I mean, you were in Egypt in what you called like a cult farm kind of yeah. area. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then you went to Dubai and now you're here. So I feel like people who have seen hardship, they're they're able to figure things out by themselves. They're not like, oh, like, where is it? I don't know where it is. Like, yo, you asked random people. This guy asked a random Chinese woman who, yo, that's probably part of the furniture store, bro. Like, it's a separate building, but like, you're, you're a she beast was, for that. She was pissed. No, she, she was, <laughs> And then I asked like some guy in the garage and then I asked some other guys who don't want to speak English and then he let me hear. So, uh, yo, I'm, I'm really impressed by that. And um, I did a little research. I know... Um, you did originally have a YouTube channel, which the annoying boy, which is still up. <laughs> and it's crazy. This man's first video, you're like 10, bro. You're like, you're like what's up, guys? Uh, I'm the annoying boy. Like, I'm going to make uh, social experiments. Hey, guys, this is the annoying boy. And today I'll be talking about what will I do in my upcoming videos. So I could see that even from an early age, you always kind of like were geared towards content creation. And then I guess your last YouTube video was like a year ago or something, but you, you kind of start to focus more on like micro content on Instagram and TikTok, which mm. is your, your biggest platform. So how did you start making your current style of content like on TikTok and Instagram? Well, you know, first of all, I, I started my YouTube channel when I was like 13, no, mm. 12. Okay. And I used to do pranks, you know, just kind of like express myself. I used to do like skits and all that. And then I, um, and then I just took a break. I took a break for like three, four years. And one day I was sitting, like I always I used to do like TikTok on the side, but I wasn't that serious. And then I went back to Dubai, you know, to go visit my family. And then I was looking at my family's state, you know, mm. I'm not going to say it's like the best, you know, it wasn't the best. Okay. And I was kind of like sitting in bed and me and my brother had to, we were sharing a room and we were both sitting in bed and we were like, man, I got to do something bigger. You know, I got to do something better because, you know, I have all these different obstacles, you know, what's happening with my family, being in, being alone in Canada, you know, like it's, it's a big challenge, you mm -hmm. know? And I was like, I want to do something bigger because my first year in Canada, that was after my first year. Mm -hmm. My first year in Canada was a big flop. Um, I, I was new to the country. I didn't know what I was doing. I was working a minimum wage job and I would blow everything on my rent like i wasn't mm. making any money you know mm. and i was you know i was like 17 18 at the time because mm. i graduated early mm. so my brother was just like do it do tiktok mm. and just keep on doing it so i started doing tiktok and at first you know it wasn't doing well and then i did this um interview with ronnie coleman because i used to work i saw that the bodybuilder yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i used to work as an interviewer back in dubai for like a few months for like four months and i met a lot of high-minded people you know like they, they gave me a lot of advice and that's what really helped me out right now mm. and i interviewed people like ronnie coleman michael cudlitz from the walking dead mm. Ro um i think ross marquand um big rami a lot of a lot of different names a lot of big names and the ronnie coleman video blew up after i reposted it for the third time so guys if a video flops that doesn't mean it's game over. Content is content at the end of the day. Like I could interview some guy 
who doesn't even know, like, who gave boring answers, but I will find a way to make a content, to make content out of it, you know? Mm. And that's what I did, you know? I, I did an interview with Ronnie Coleman. I was like, uh, what do you have to say to everyone who's skipping legs? And he's like, don't skip legs or something like that, mm. you know? And it got 700,000 views. Mm. I was stuck at 4.4K for five months, do, making straight content four times a day. For, I never gave up and all my friends were making fun of me and like negativity was surrounding me like crazy, but I didn't, didn't stop. Hmm. And then after that interview blew up, a few of my other videos blew up and all that. And then my biggest hit, which was my mom prank. I pranked my mom with the alcohol and it got 5.5 million. And that honestly, without it, I'm not going to lie. Like I probably would have 30K by now, you know, by the end of this year. Like it, this video skyrocketed me to 20K. Hmm. And then from there, I just started branching out on different content. I started doing Arabic content. And hmm. then, you know, like, I feel like in the beginning, like when you guys are doing content, it's always good to kind of like go, like, let's just say you're from Toronto. It's not a, it's not a bad thing to do Toronto content. And then like slowly move into American content or whatever you want to do, you know? But I hmm. feel like in the beginning, you should stick to your roots. Hmm. So that way, you know, you kind of connect with your people and then mm. your people will help you grow out your audience, you know? Mm. At the end of the day, like, you don't got to worry about anything as long as you have that creative mindset. I promise you, as long as you have a creative mindset, it doesn't matter what's happening, you're going to make it. You know, you're going to do, like, you know, you're going to be better. Mm. Do you find that when you started making content more towards the Arab community that it kind of built like a real following. Whereas if you just focus on Toronto content, like you might get views and likes, but, you, or do you feel like the, Tor like your fan base, is it mostly Arabs? Um, right now it's still mostly Arabs, but obviously it has decreased since, you know, like I kind of built a following in Toronto. Uh -huh. But as I said, like, I do feel like the reason why I have a very loyal fan base, although I have like 70K, 70K, like it is, it is a lot, you know, it's a big thing, mm. but you know, you have people that have like 200K and 300K and 400K, but they don't have a fan base. Yeah. I have people that genuinely connect to me, that connect to my jokes, connect to my little jokes, you know? So I have kind of this like community and this family. And even when, you know, like I needed help, like with when I got into a car accident, my my fan base, I don't even consider my fan base, like my, my family, you know? Like mm. I consider my family. They helped me out, you know? Uh, when my sister got bullied and I asked people, you know, to spread awareness and to kind of like show some love to my little sister, you know, because mm. she's 11. Mm. Uh, I started this movement called Hashtag We're With You, Miriam, mm. because she was getting bullied in school and she's 11, you know, like I do oh, believe yeah. like bullying to some extent, like bullying, like there's a way, like criticism is fine, mm. but when you're just getting picked on by the whole school, like being that one person you're getting picked on by the whole school, it's crazy, especially that you're a girl too, you know? Uh -huh, yeah. Um, and I do believe if it wasn't for my like family, like, you know, my fam, like my fan base, I would have never, I would have never made it reach half a million views and I would have never like been able to spread the awareness. So Omar, how does someone convert their followers into fans? Like, cause there's a difference. There are some people who will watch your stuff. They might even interact with it, but they're not like a fan that's going to uh, take you to the next level or stick with you on that journey. So how do you distinguish between like a follower and a fan how do you get fans instead of just followers or, or viewers you know i would say um first of all always be yourself always always be yourself like people know me for me you know that's why my content is very very like i have no niche i have no niche i just do whatever i want and it gets views you know sometimes it flops but like it's because i'm myself you know mm -hmm. and also, another thing is don't be afraid to try different things, you know? Like, I I went from Arab content, and then I went to Persian content. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 you'd be surprised. That's actually how I got some people in Toronto, through Persian people, you know? And that would have never happened if I didn't have the Arab content first. Then after the Arab Persian content, I started doing university, York, York interviews. Mm -hmm. And because I started doing York interviews, everyone else started doing York interviews. Like all the York interviews you see right now, I'm the OG. Like I'm Jeez. the, I'm the, I'm the, literally, if you look at the stats, I was literally the first person who ever did a York interview. Not, maybe someone did a York interview before me, but I'm, 
I'm the first person at York that blew up from doing interviews and I was known for that. Mm. And I started interviewing all these different people and uh, like honestly now York is a content fest. It's a creator fest, man. You go to York, you see everyone wants to do interviews. That's why like I don't I don't do York videos anymore, you know? Mm. But um yeah, like <laughs> how, how did you and uh, City Boy JJ link up? Because I see you guys do a lot of collabs too. And he he's kind of in that. You guys obviously have different uh, specializations, but you guys also do the university interviews and kind of like, I don't want to say cringy content because I feel like you guys know what you're doing. But it's also like it's content that's going to get a reaction. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, for, for me, not all my content is like that. You know, like I... Like mostly, like I just do my own content, you know, my interviews, you know, my funny videos, uh, my skits, my pranks with my mom, just normal interviews. But if you're just talking about like my videos with City Boy JJ, um, we met actually at York mm -hmm. and we filmed our first ever video and it blew up. It got like half, it got like a million, mm -hmm. it got a million. And then we kept doing more videos. Like I think me and City Boy JJ's videos got like 3 million, vid 3 million views. Or like four million views like we got a lot of views together and yeah that, that's how i met the guy the guy is a great guy um he's not he's not like what everyone thinks you know mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. i feel like even you uh like meeting you like i can tell like you're a genuine dude and <laughs> and your content it's very like diverse because you do have like you know like the the stuff with your mom and the, the whatsapp and i think that's hilarious <laughs> and then the street interviews as mm -hmm. well um but when it comes to I guess looking forward, do you see yourself kind of continuing to grow as a content creator? Do you one day want to be a journalist or like make movies or be an act? Like, where do you want to take it? Because um, I think you're going to be bigger than just like a TikTok guy. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for that. Um, for me, honestly, my goal is to just be bigger than life. You know, like I want to, I want to honestly like... Uh, Logan Paul has inspired me and that was actually like my my dream before that and it's to honestly be a WWE wrestler you know I, I don't see a lot of people talking about this but what? I want I want to be a WWE wrestler guys I love WWE like I <laughs> I watch it until this day and it's you know people can call it fake and you can call it whatever they want but at the end of the day it has a lore it has a story and it keeps people watching you know there's mm -hmm. a reason why grown ass men still watch this and it's because of the story, you know, mm -hmm. these are, these are real life stuntmen that put in 365 days in a year, like literally, like they work every day, you mm -hmm. know, and watching Logan Paul do content and becoming a wrestler, like honestly inspires me to actually follow the footsteps of him without the Japan part and all that. <laughs> <laughs> would you, if you were in the WWE one, what would your name be? And would you be like a heel or would you try to be like a good guy? All right, so I kind of like have this like gimmick, you know, already. And I think honestly, it's like, it, it would be a good gimmick, you know, kind of like, um, uh, my, I would, first of all, it would be my name, Omar Biltagi, kind of like how Randy Orton, John yeah. Cena. Um, my gimmick would kind of be like, you know, um, honestly, I haven't really thought of it, but kind of like a powerhouse, you know? Okay. And I would kind of like want to be like, let's just say if Randy Orton is still there or like when any of the old wrestlers are still there, you know, I can kind of be like their mentor mm -hmm. and then kind of have this like mentor versus young uh, mentoree. There was, um, whatever, who know? was that one Arab wrestler, Iron Sheik? Iron Sheik was Persian. Was Persian the one Arab wrestler right now is Sami Zayn. And mm. yo, Sami Zayn is amazing. You know, he he's done a lot. And the thing is, like, a lot of the Arab community don't recognize that. He's made a venom at WrestleMania. And not a lot of, like, if you think about it, like, in the history of WrestleManias, 40 WrestleManias. And a lot of people, like, have main evented more than once. Sami Zayn managed to be one of them. And he's a Muslim Arab, mm -hmm. you know? So that's that's something huge for me, and I'm huge for a lot of people out there. A lot of kids that look up to him. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like, so. I didn't even know you're into WWE. Now I have like <laughs> all these WWE questions. Okay, who are your top five WWE wrestlers of all time? Oh, all time. All okay, time. all time, all time. Um, John Cena. Okay. Randy Orton. Damn. All time is crazy. Where, um, is Rey Mysterio on that list? Jeff Hardy for sure. Jeff oh, okay. Hardy. I'll say Roman Reigns right now. And damn, you can say Edge. 
Edge. Edge. Edge. Edge. Edge. You know, he's from he's from Toronto. Well, he's actually from Orangeville, like a, an hour out, but he's from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edge. Edge is amazing, man. Like, Edge was sick. He w- he did. He took so much like detail. Um, in terms of like designing his outfits and his storyline and his character, like he really took it seriously. And like you were saying, like grown men still watch wrestling because it's a mix of like theater and sport. It's like almost like gladiatorial kind of thing, but it's controlled chaos and it's super entertaining. And I think that is a unique goal for someone to have. I never heard someone from Toronto be like, yeah, I'm trying to be in a WWE. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, inshallah, bro. inshallah, inshallah. hopefully it works out. Yeah. Um, okay. So what I did see, um, the reason actually I hit you up because I seen you like here and there. I think I saw you with like City Boy JJ content. But then when I saw the wave room rant that you went on calling Toronto the <laughs> fakest city. Mostly everyone here is an a- And the nice people, they have a big ass ego and they think that they're the, the top. I was like, yo, I got to get this guy on because... <laughs> I know this is a sentiment that many people hold. So what made you realize that Toronto was what you call the fakest city? Okay. Okay. So first of all, I just want to say, um, when I made that video, I low key regret it only for one reason, not for my statement, just because I kind of said it in a very negative tone, Hmm. but it had to be said in negative tone, but I, but I was kind of like pushing towards like more positive content. Mm -hmm. And I was actually trying to get rid of the Toronto content. Like that's it. Like, after that video, that video was the last Toronto content I'm ever posting hmm. for a very long time. Because first of all, um, as I said, like, you know, every Toronto's a very small city, you know, and not a lot of people are trying to do bigger things, you know, larger than life things. So everyone just always hates on each other. You know, you have like when like because in canada everyone comes from nowhere you know we all come from small beginnings we all come from humble beginnings so when that someone gets a bit of a following gets a bit of like exposure whether they start a small business whether you start a small clothing brand they always have this big ego and the reason why i'm saying this it's because i've dealt with a lot of people like that you know i've Mm. dealt with a lot of nice people but I've also dealt with a lot of people with big egos. And what makes it hard for me is I don't have a big ego. Although I have 74K, I just feel I, I just feel like I'm a, I'm a normal guy. And because mm. I am a normal guy, mm. these numbers don't matter. In any second, I could lose these numbers. I could lose everything because I've already experienced that. I've lost a lot of things in my life and I've lost a lot of blessings in my life. Mm. So that's why I know that these numbers don't matter. My status doesn't matter. You know, I, I just think I'm a normal university student who's mm. just trying to make it out, you know. Mm. But that's the thing. A lot of a lot of people in Toronto just, you know, when, once they get a little bit of status, they think like they're the shit. They have a big ego, you know. They start giving you attitude. Mm. There's a lot of attitude here in the city. And I'm not like that. So when I don't have an ego and I'm surrounded by an ego fest, you know, and mm. everyone's just trying to eat on each other. It, it drives me crazy, you know? Like, what am I supposed to do, you know? So, like, I kind of made that video. Do I regret it? I only regret it in the sense of, like, just spreading more negativity, you know? I should have said it in a more positive tone. And I do apologize for anyone that took offense, but I did mean everything I said, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not going to back down from what I said, you know? Because mm-hmm. it's the truth, you know? Like, people like you, you know, you're a good guy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um Another person who might have a podcast might go like, you know, oh yeah, shit, I have the podcast, you know, I'm big shit, you know, whatever. Like, people are just like that, you know? Like, I know people with a thousand followers and they think they're like big shit, you know? But they're not, you know? Like, no Mm. one is. Mm. And they like... You got you guys gotta realize that I swear to God, it doesn't matter if you have a million, doesn't matter if you have 10 million, doesn't matter if you're a CEO, you could lose everything one day. And all that ego is... Like, it's not going to help you out, man. It's not going to help you out, you know? That's well said. And I do think, actually, it had to be said the way you said it because (laughs) it's like a wake-up call, you know? Like, I feel like, yeah, you're right. In Toronto, you meet people who have a little clout. And if you don't have as much clout, they look like, okay, I don't need this guy. Or I don't know. They don't treat people just as individuals. Or, like, you know, they they treat you like, oh, you're a fan or something because you're, you're showing love. So this is, I think, a bigger cultural problem, not just in Toronto, but maybe... In, in Canada or the West, maybe it has to do with the fact that it's very competitive here. Like the Toronto creative market, we're all kind of competing for clout. And 
you know, you feel like, oh, I have clout, so I've accomplished something. Oh, but these other people, they don't have what I have because I'm X, Y, Z. But like you said, it can all be someone. You can get your Instagram account removed. So all the <laughs> hundreds of thousands of followers, everything <laughs> gone. Now you got to start again, you know. So, well, I think the humble approach that you have and even just meeting you. That's what's going to make you successful. That's what's going to take you to the next level where, you know, you're going to be bigger than people, but you're not going to act bigger than people. You know what I'm saying? Because you come from humble beginnings and I want to know a little bit about one, your your Egyptian upbringing yeah, yeah. and then transitioning to Dubai. How did that happen? Okay. So basically I moved to Dubai when I was like literally like 12 months. I lived in Dubai my whole life. Ah, okay. But I used to spend all my summers in in Dubai, in Egypt. Hmm. So like summer is like what, four months, three months. Mm -hmm. So I would spend three months every year. That's like, I don't know how many, maybe three months and three years. It's like, nah, I'm not gonna do the math right now. <laughs> but <laughs> you could say like four, four years. If you count them out, maybe it's like four or five years of okay. Egypt. And in my time in Egypt, you know, I realized that Yo, man, you guys should count your blessings. You know, the kids in Egypt are are struggling, you know, like especially like because I come from a farm side. That is true. Like all my farm stories that I have said are true. And basically, whoever doesn't know, I have a farm back in Egypt and it's basically like just all my cousins and all my uncles from my farm side. And, you know, we have like donkeys, cows. And I see these guys like I see these kids, you know, they have to take like a, you have to go inside a small van and and the van is like bro smushed you know like there's no space you know like and they have to like go through mud and go through grass you know and like just to get to school you know and their school is not even like good it's it's a very small school you know and it's and it just makes me clown, count my blessings you know and when i would go to the farm like there would there would not be any ac you know like our so no our food was good and i'm not gonna lie our food was like organic you know <laughs> fresh hot milk you know yeah, yeah. fresh eggs mm. but my point is is that like a lot of kids in egypt you know just don't have the blessings that people in dubai have and the people in in canada have too you know mm. a lot of people in canada go like this university is shit oh this university stinks oh the homeless oh the crackers this is me actually talking good about toronto okay <laughs> guys toronto is such a blessing compared to Egypt in that sense. But if you're talking about like the livelihood and the people and the culture and all that, I personally obviously prefer Egypt, you know? Mm. I prefer like staying in Egypt, but living, I prefer to live in Toronto. Unless I was like super loaded, then mm. I would probably live in the North Coast in Egypt. Mm. But yeah, Egypt's amazing. You know, people there are nice, people there are respectful and yeah. How would you compare the general mental health of people coming from rural Egypt versus people in Toronto, because we might have more from a materialistic perspective, but maybe we have more depression, maybe because my, my mom's family, they're from a village in Turkey and they don't have much either, but the people there are so happy. Like they're happier than people here. How is it like uh, from, you, from your like village? All right. So basically like it's the exact same thing, you know, like I do believe that when people have like like people in toronto like mental health does exist like mental illness do does exist huge you know? thing it's, in toronto it's a huge thing and it does exist you know like i do believe it but i do believe a big reason why it's like that it's because like of the mindset you know mm. back in egypt the mindset is kind of like um you know we we count our small blessings you know like let's just say we have a big huge problem we're gonna count our small blessings and these small blessings are like having a roof over our head, you know, having food, having a family, mm. you know. But the thing is in Canada, like, I don't blame anyone, you know, but in Canada, people were never raised to go like, yo, you got to count your small blessings, you know. The, the parents just kept complaining, 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 complaining to their kids. Mm. And what would the kids do? Complain, 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 complain. My dad, um huge shout out to baba you know but like my dad you know he he struggled so much my dad was a was a single my my grandfather died when my dad was 15 uh, my dad was a single uh, was a single man of seven sisters and his brother was in the army so he was the only one he had to work he had to study and he did not complain once he took care of all seven of his sisters all seven of my aunts you know mm -hmm. he he found his way to dubai you know and all that and like he never complained once 
You know, he mm-hmm. never complained once. Why? Because he counted his blessings. Mm-hmm. Imagine, imagine if someone here, or even me, honestly, even if someone like here, you know, if that happens, if that happened to them, what happened to my dad? They, like, if they didn't have this mentality of let me count my small blessings, mm-hmm. they would have, they would have had it hard. They would have had it very hard. That's very, that's honestly motivational and inspiring because he didn't complain and we complain about every little thing here. Oh, the potholes. Oh, my insurance. Oh, my mortgage. And and your dad just put his head down, said Alhamdulillah for like everything he had. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's really about mindset versus like if you always are in a negative complaining mindset, you're not going to get anything positive, you know? Yeah. So shout out to your pops for real. Appreciate and it. I you. think he'd be really proud. He's really proud to, to see what you become. And uh, I think... There's, there's going to be a, a high trajectory for you. I have a couple more questions. Yeah, yeah obviously. Go ahead, man. Top three Egyptian foods. <laughs> <laughs> Top three Egyptian foods. Uh, first of all, number three, it's going to have to be... Uh, damn, that's actually hard. Bombar. Bombar. Shu, Bombar. Shu had Bombar, yeah. Bombar is basically, I think, like test uh, rice. Like you put rice inside of testicle skin. I testicle could be, skin. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And you fry it. And it just tastes really good. All right. And the second one is uh, kushari. Kushari is basically like chickpeas, lentils, rice, pasta, red sauce. Um, yeah. Like a fried every, onions, good carb, every, every good carb. Every good carb combined. A, eh? It's a carb fest, bro. That's why Egyptians are fat. <laughs> you know, you know, Egyptians are the fat. Like, I think I watched this one video. It said that Egyptians are the, uh, Egypt is the most obese, um, f- like infested country. Really? Yes. You guys are up there with America? Like, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I heard. I heard that Egypt's above America. Uh, bro, yeah, ca- carb, carb infested, bro. Like, honestly, I'm the last but not least. My number one favorite Egyptian dish. It's actually a dessert: rice pudding. Okay. Rice pudding is basically just like rice with milk. It's yeah. not of that Walmart bullshit. No, it's so good. It's, it's amazing. Is it like a shure? Like Turkish people have sutla, just kind of. It, I think. It's kind of yeah. It's kind of similar to what like the Afghans have, you know, mm-hmm. and what the Turkish have. Like it's. Like every culture has that same thing, mm-hmm. exactly, exact same thing. But I just feel like Egyptians do it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So growing up in Dubai, I feel like Dubai, kind of like Toronto, is known to be like a multicultural metropolitan city. So I'm sure you encounter a lot of different cultures and a lot of Arabs too, right? So I have a list of some Arab countries, and quickly just tell me the first thing that comes to your head. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Lebanon. Um. Hum- girls. <laughs> Iraq, uh, Dolma, Syria, Shawarma, uh, Saudi Arabia, Albik. <laughs> oh, jo- I'm fasting. That's why. <laughs> Jordan, man, stuff. But I'm actually because I'm, I'm fasting. My bad, yo. <laughs> it's a different. This is yeah. This would have been different if we did after. If yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Kuwait, football, Libya. Um, damn, Libya. There's actually Gaddafi comes to mind for me, but it was a little different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll skip Libya for uh, now. Oman, sounds good. Oman, uh, the sand. Qatar. Uh, did you say Qatar already? Uh, I don't think so. I could have thought, yeah. Uh, football. Um, Morocco. Morocco. Magic. UAE. First word that comes to mind, um, perfect, perfect country. Perfect country. Yeah. Yemen. Yemen, short. Tunisia. Um, girls. Palestine. Free Palestine. Sudan. Sudan. Um, they're people, man. They're so funny. Kuwait. Kuwait. Um, cars, Egypt, <laughs> <laughs> Egypt, um, the farms, Bahrain, the environment. Okay. All right. That was, that was good. This guy said Le- girls for Lebanon and Tunisia, I think. So <laughs> any Lebanese or Tunisian girls, you know what his brother likes? Um, how I do... <laughs> what is it? I mean, I would have said that Iraq too, but I was like, that's enough. Much You're like, nah, Dolma. <laughs> yeah, nah, Dolma, Dolma. I was like, I got to change it up, you know? Um, I do have a quick question about Egypt because, you know, we 
everyone associates the pyramids with Egypt, yeah. right? In Egypt, how are the pyramids viewed? Because I feel like in the West, we see it as like this mystical thing, all oh, the aliens, this, this, that. But in Egypt, how do people see the pyramids? Because it's like in your backyard, you know? You know what? I've actually never visited the pyramids. What? <laughs> this is an Egyptian. Um, no, no, hold up, hold up. I'm from Alexandria. Alexandria oh. is... Um, as you know, a different city. Uh -huh. I think, Alex yeah, Alexander the Great fo founded it. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. No, I think no. Alexander the Great yeah. founded the city, yeah. and yeah, it's just a different city. It's more of a beachy area, mm -hmm. you know. And Cairo, Cairo is more of like a sandy area. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you one thing: if you do go to the pyramids, do not accept anything from anyone because they're gonna scam you. I tell you from now: if you're <laughs> planning on spending ten dollars there, you're gonna spend like. Easy two hundred dollars and two hundred dollars. Well, the pyramids for them two hundred dollars would feed them for like a whole month. Mm, wow. Please be careful because like Egypt is a great country, but also there's a lot of tourist camps, mm. especially in the pyramids. The pyramids is like that's where they get their more they get their money. What are the big scams? Is it like photography or is it like tours or like? Do you, yeah, like it's mostly like yo, yo, okay, let me show you around and stuff like that. You know, like do you want to buy this piece of uh, <laughs> like t-shirt or something? And yeah. then it's like fifty dollars, although it's like five dollars or two dollars. <laughs> oh man, but there must be some people like, oh my god, authentic, an authentic shirt from the pyramids. Like they probably, I, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta respect the hustle, like from the yo, guys. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. If I lived in Egypt. And I needed money. I probably would have. Done you go something. to the pyramids I probably and find would have, some internationals. I probably would have scammed them and just <laughs> <laughs> went on with my day. Um, so right now, uh, I'm learning Arabic. I'm learning the Levantine dialect because my dad's Syrian. But as someone like you, you grew up mostly in Dubai, but you also like are Egyptian. What are your favorite Arab accents? Favorite Arab accents? I would have to say the. Let me let me think about this for a while before I give my accent. I would say the Iraqi dialect is actually like very nice. I like the Iraqi dialect. The Lebanese dialect only for the girls. <laughs> like, you know, like I feel like, you know, for the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and honestly, like I'm gonna have to go with the Egyptian dialect too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I feel like um, Egypt, the Egyptian dialect is so widely understood because Egypt is known for like their cinema and media industry, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you into like Egyptian movies at all? Yeah. So as someone who wants to know about Egyptian cinema, what do you think are some like five must-see Egyptian movies? Okay. Um, Tir Inta. Okay. Okay. Tir Inta is, um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Asal Uswid, Asal Uswid, it's, it's a very funny movie. It's about this uh, Egyptian who lived in America his whole life and then he came to Egypt and it just shows you how like the American passport plays a huge, huge role, you know, when you go to Egypt and stuff like that. It's a tear into Asal Uswid. Safara al Amara. it just shows you, you know, especially like, you know, with what's happening in Palestine. It shows you like, it just shows you like what kind of, like how messed up they are, you know, like what's happening there it just shows you, you know, like in the Egypt's in Egypt's point of view in a way. Um it's a funny movie, but then it has like a very sad ending. That's three. Uh I'd have to say <laughs> Morgan Ahmed Morgan. You know what it's a classic. Uh basically talks about this dad who goes to who goes to his kid's university. And decides he wants to graduate, you know. But the guy's really rich; like he's already done everything, you know. He mm -hmm. faked his degree, he faked everything, but now he wants to like actually get a degree, you know, for some reason. I think because he he was obsessed with the kid's professor or something. Oh god! <laughs> mm -hmm. And the last one has to be um, then. There's a lot of Egyptian movies. Feel Azra. It's a scary movie. It's a scary oh, movie. Hmm. Feel Azra is honestly like if it was done like in English, mm -hmm. you know. I'm telling you, it would have it would have broke the internet. It's mm. a very nice movie. It's about like I think this like blue pill or something, and like mm. you take it, and then you go kind of crazy or something. It's it's very nice. I like it. Okay, I'm I'm gonna yeah. check those out because uh, yeah, I've I've heard a lot of good things about Egyptian cinema, and like my dad always raves about it, and even Egyptian music is like pretty good. Like what do you, like what would you do if like Omar Diab like contacted you? Like how would you feel? Oh 
my god, if I'm they have contacted me, you know, I would the first thing I would do is like, yo, let's come shoot a video, you know. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> give me, give me, give me like five, give me like ten tickets for me and my family back in Egypt. <laughs> is he's a huge deal there? He eh? is, he is, no, he is like, he's like Amr- the Michael Jackson of <laughs> Egyptian music. He is, he is. Him, Amr Diab, you know, Tamir Husni, you have now Muhammad Ramadan, mm-hmm. you know, and then you have like the upcoming people like, you know, like Wigs. You have like all these amazing artists, you know, and the one thing, like it's not because I'm being biased, but I do believe when it comes to like, like pop culture, Egypt has the best pop culture. You know? oh, when it comes to I the cinema, so. the music, everything. Mm. Just Egyptians are charismatic, you know, they're they're amazing. But all, also like a lot of different Arab countries are charismatic too, you know, but I just mm. feel like Egypt plays a huge role mm-hmm. in today's Arab world. And the culture. In the culture, yeah, mm-hmm. big um, I know, I think it's iftar soon, like, I'm pretty sure. So I have just one rapid fire round and then one more question. I'll let you go on. Where, where do you plan on getting iftar? You're going to go like, there's bare air, air restaurants actually, here. Actually, I actually have no idea. So I'm going to take a walk around, you know, see how it is. Do you, uh, if you want, could, there's like sumak barbecue is here. Like Ghadir is here. Like there's really good Arab restaurants, like close. Yeah. So if you want, we can, uh, we can all go after. We um, all go. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Okay. So rapid fire. Uh, do you believe in God or higher power? God. Yeah. Allah. If you had one last meal, what would it be? Damn. Uh, rice pudding. <laughs> uh, who's your favorite artist of all time? Venno Malish. If you weren't doing content creation, what would you be doing? <laughs> Probably working at Party City or something. <laughs> <laughs> just for that one month a year, just during Halloween. Party City is like seasonal, right? Yeah, um Okay, sweet food or salty food? Sweet bowl. I have a sweet tooth. If you could have one superpower, uh, what would it be? Invisibility. Uh, do you have any tattoos? No. I'm would a, you get tattooed? No. Never, I'm alive. Never. How am I? I can never. Uh, cat person or dog person? Bro, dog, 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 dog. Dog? dog. Okay. But they have so much fur, man. Like, like stop with the fur. The <laughs> fur is annoying. <laughs> These dogs need to chill. Yeah, they look uh, too much. I would say blunts or papes, but I don't think no, you get that. I, like I, that. I won't smoke. I won't smoke. I won't drink. Um, but actually, I wanted to like when I first came to Canada, I was like, "Yo, man, I can't wait to try the blunt." You know, I can't <laughs> wait to start smoking and stuff like that. Although I've never smoked in my life, but I always wanted to try weed. Yeah. But then, uh, sadly, like there was a person that I knew that was very close to me that used to do it a lot, and then I realized how it affected them mentally and how mm-hmm. it actually destroyed them. Like I really watched someone that I knew go from like, it It, it, it was bad. Like I can't mm. even talk about it. It mm. was like, I do believe weed and moderation is good, but also like if you have too much weed, like how are you going to succeed in life? You know, I agree. And I'm the type if I like something, it, like why put more obstacles on me when I already have so many obstacles coming to this country, you know? I feel you. How yeah. about like Shisha? Like you don't even Ah, know. no, Shisha's fine. You know, like, okay. like, 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 I, like I hit her too, you know, like, yeah. but I, again, I'm not a, I'm not a heavy smoker. Like uh. literally I have one or two hits and I'll die. Like mm. I, my lungs are not used to it. Okay. Um, do you prefer, uh, apples or windows? Like products, like technology, apple, apple. Um, what was your favorite subject in school? No subjects. Say no school. I would say I'd say <laughs> I'd say maybe uh damn. <laughs> no, I hated school. Okay, man. yeah, hated... we'll, yeah. Uh if you had to learn another language, what language would you learn? Yo, Mandarin. Mandarin. This guy's Yo, smart. Mandarin. Mandarin, guys, Mandarin is gonna I, I'm sorry, English is not gonna be the main language anymore. It's gonna be Mandarin in the future. 50 years from now. Mandarin is going to be the main language. Our grandkids are going to be speaking Mandarin. They, eh? they have to, if they want to like succeed in business, <laughs> like I, that's actually what they do now. Like, you know, mm-hmm. they speak in Mandarin now. Okay. Um, okay. So what do you think happens when you die? I do believe you just stay in grave, you know, mm-hmm. and then the angels, you know, cause for us, you know, the angels come and they ask us three questions, you know, um, they ask us like questions about like our faith and all that stuff and then depends on how good you were or bad you were you know like you're just gonna be in the grave you know you're just gonna Mm. be in the grave you're like time is gonna feel timeless you know but in the same time like if you're a good guy then your grave is gonna be very open you know Mm. you're gonna be kind of chilling you're gonna have you know you're just gonna be chilling you know Mm. but if you weren't so much of a good person, you know, the grave is going to be very tight. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when the day of judgment happens and all that stuff, and then we all go up, 
Um, mm. You know, we just, we, you know, like we kind of like see if God sees if we go to hell or heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair. It's kind of. Uh, June, day, June you know? what time is it? What time's the start? 724. Like, okay, so we have, so to, we have, we have to, good we have time. To. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The last thing I wanted to ask, because um, I, I want people to know that, and I can tell this about you, that like you are grateful for the opportunities in Canada. Like you see Toronto, it's like, it's a blessing, you know? But what are three things you would warn someone about if they were thinking about relocating to Toronto? Like what are three things that maybe you wish you knew before you came or like that maybe someone should know if they want to make that move. Okay. Not everyone here is nice. That's warning, right? So not everyone here is nice. A lot of people, a lot of people, you know, you're going to have people that have attitude, but you're also the most dangerous type of people, the people that act nice, but they're actually like the slow, like the guys lie to you, like, like very little, you know, mm -hmm. to, and persuade you like, and they kind of use you, you know, people here in Toronto kind of do that. I, I do believe in other countries too, but I've noticed it in Toronto more than I have in Dubai and Egypt, mm -hmm. the two previous countries that I was in. Um, two, I would have to say is the girls too. <laughs> the the girls too, but not all girls, just the girls that kind of have like that Toronto accent, like, <laughs> like, like, calm down, calm down. Y'all shoddy? If the shoddy don't have the man, if the shot, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> Yo, like, I'm done. But if you're talking about like, you know, the, those nice, respectable girls, like maybe in, in, uh, in Vaughn, in Vaughn, Hill, yeah. in Vaughn, like <laughs> Richmond Hill, you know, maybe like in, in Saga. <clears throat> oh my God. But again, like, um, oh yeah. And the third, third thing is, is that, <laughs> oh my God, but, um, don't come, ex don't come here expecting that it's going to be like high school musical. It's going to be like fast and furious or like any of those like white, white movies, you know, it's very diverse here in Canada. Like it's very, very diverse. Like I remember the first, the first week I was in Canada, you know, I went to go explore. I meant to go to my university. I went to Brampton by mistake. Mm. And I'm not even shitting on Brampton. Like I really went to Brampton and I was like, why is everyone here brown? Yeah. And I was very confused. I was like, am I still in Canada? He was like, yeah, you're just in Brampton. The guy was like, you're just in Brampton. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then I was like, I know, and then I was just like, I was just like, oh shit, like what would I do? And then he was what like, do I do? <laughs> what did I do, bro? I was, it was, I was one week in, the, I was one week in the country, and I was already lost in Brampton, bro. And then I, I, I remember, like, I went inside Seven Eleven. I remember exactly. And then the old, the old brown lady was like, no, nah, 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 because I think I like, I, I double, I double gulped or something like that, yeah. like for the smoothies. Yeah. She started shouting at me and the other kid, and then I. Um, <laughs> I took the bus and it dropped me halfway through and I walked. I walked for three hours. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then like some other time, you know, I went to Richmond Hill and it were all, they were all Persians, you know? And I, again, I was confused. I was like, I got lost. Every day I would get lost in a new city for the first, th that's why like, I've only been here for two years, but I feel like I've, I know my, like I know how the, country operates mm -hmm. only because I got lost so many times in the first two months. I literally explored everywhere. I <laughs> the funniest thing I've heard today was, yo, you're in Brampton. like, what do I do? <laughs> it's almost like you went to like a different country and like, you're like, Oh, like, how do I get back? Like, is it okay for me to be in Brampton? Like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, what's going on? Like, I'm not even being racist. I was like, but then I, <laughs> I, I, I found out that like basically every area has its country. And honestly, yeah. I think that's a pretty cool thing. Like, so cool. Like how Brampton, they're all like brown people there. How Mississauga, it's all Arabs there. Mm. How in Vaughan, they're all, they're all like Italians there. You know, how in, in Richmond Hill, they're all Persians. Markham, you got a lot of like Chinese and, and like, Pakistan, yeah, and pa uh -huh. you know, like you have like all these different, like it's, it's nice. Honestly, it's nice. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. You know, you don't see that in other countries. Yeah, man. So shout out to Toronto. Shout out to Omar Beltagi coming through my brother. Yo, I appreciate you. Where can the people find you um, on uh, socials? Um, on my TikTok, which is Beltagi, B-E-L-T as in belt and then A-G-I. You know, guys, I'm going to really be producing a lot of good content, like high quality content in the next few weeks. And I can't wait for you guys to watch my videos and actually enjoy them. 
And yeah, my Instagram is Omar Beltagi underscore. I'm even, I even started posting there. So yeah, mm-hmm. please check me out. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yo, That's inshallah, it. we do some more collabs in the definitely, future. Definitely. If you ever need, <laughs> if you're ever doing some reveals video or something or like guess the Arab, like I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to the Borough Sound. Big up Rude June in the building. Uh, follow me at DJ's RTV. And until next time.